Hi there. Welcome to another video on the fruit of the Spirit. So far in this series, we've discussed the fruits of peace and of gentleness, and these videos are linked to below. You just click where you see the three dots and the word more. Today, we're doing the fruit of patience. Now, the word patience in our verse is translated from the Greek word makrothumia, which means having a long fuse, long suffering, being patient without blowing up, without losing our temper. Now, if you watch my video on gentleness, you may be thinking, this sounds familiar, and you would be right, because I discussed anger in that one. So this video will be a bonus video in our series, where I'll teach on another kind of patience, hupomoni patience. Hupomoni patience is being patient without giving up. It's patient endurance. Hoopomony, like you got to keep a hula hoop going so it doesn't fall to the ground. Now, a common thread in this video, video series is trouble. When trouble comes our way, our knee-jerk reaction is, why? Why is this happening? The number one culprit we blame is often, sadly, God. I'm having this trouble because God is punishing me. Or, God is causing this trouble to test me. No, that's not how God operates today in the age of grace. God's method of dealing with the world today is to act only in grace, in love and favor and mercy toward everyone, including the undeserving. God is not the source of our troubles. God is a source of our strength and help in our afflictions. So please, let's not blame God. Instead, let's look at some of the actual sources of our troubles. Source number one, we live in a fallen creation, in a sick world. So no surprise, we fall victim to the forces of nature. Source number two, bad choices. Our flawed world is inhabited by flawed human beings who often make bad choices. And we unfortunately fall victim to these bad choices. Bad choices made by others and bad choices made by ourselves. Source number three, the intersection of time and chance. We cry, why me? But sometimes there is no explanation for our trouble or tragedy, except we were just at the wrong place at the wrong time, at the intersection of time and chance. Time and chance happen to them all. Bad things happen to everybody. Let me draw your attention to the chapter and verse numbers here. Chapter 9, verse 11. I know it's just a fluke, but what a coincidence. I can't think of a more powerful example of being at the wrong place at the wrong time than 9-11. Here's me when trouble comes. It's like, don't hurt me. We are supposed to endure hardship, endure afflictions. Hang in there, ride it out, keep on trucking. Proverbs 23, three, the wise foresee danger and take refuge, but the fool keeps going and pays the penalty. So be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise. It's wise to accept and anticipate the fact that we will have trouble and to take reasonable precautions to be prepared for it. It's wise to plan ahead for trouble. In the suburb where I live, we get tornadoes. Nothing like Oklahoma, but does this mean we don't need to be prepared for one? No, and oh, guess what? Just last summer, we had an F3 tornado right down by the Walgreens. And you better believe I dashed with my kitty to my shelter under the basement stairs where I store blankets, flashlights, helmet, nourishment, litter box. I am prepared. Now you may know from my video on peace that last year I had brain surgery at Mayo Clinic. And beforehand, I got busy preparing for the time after my surgery when I would be recovering at home, when for 14 weeks, I would be restricted 
to holding my head upright and holding my head still. No bending down, no lifting. My poor husband would be carrying the full load of the household responsibilities, including being full-time nursemaid to his helpless wife. The Disney princess just sitting on her throne, holding her head still. So to prepare, I cooked up a storm, freezing meals in single portions to relieve my husband of cooking duty. But what I didn't realize at the time was that I had more than just a freezer full of frozen dinners stored up. We learn in 1 Timothy 6 that we are to store up a good foundation for the time to come. A good foundation could be what the Bible calls our inner person, our character. Well, it turns out that the process of storing up a good foundation in me had been going on for a few years, ever since becoming a novice student of the Bible, when I carried verses in a Ziploc bag in my purse. The Spirit of God worked inside me to develop my character, my foundation, by feeding on the Word of God as I read and absorbed it. The Spirit works to transform us to be more like Christ in our thinking and our character. And boy, do we need strength of character to endure tough times. Believe me, no one is more surprised than me how I seem to be handling my brush with serious brain surgery with peace and patience or so I'm told. Even now, over a year later, I'm still having therapy to regain my sense of balance. I faithfully do my balance exercises at home every day. And any of you who have had balance therapy might recognize Duck Bunny. Also, I'm still patiently waiting to regain full feeling on the left side of my face and mouth. I can't feel half of my tongue, so Please excuse when I trip over words. Anyway, when I hear, you're handling this all so well after all you've been through, I go, it ain't me doing this. It's the good foundation God has been storing up in me. It's the fruits of his spirit, not mine. I mean, here's my foundation before God got working on me. Okay, let's talk about enduring tough times in terms of practical application. Here comes trouble, what do we do? Let's consider my three P's. P number one, pray. Is anybody suffering? Pray. Pray without ceasing. Now this isn't saying don't ever stop praying, not even for a moment. It's saying don't give up on your prayer on your prayer life, no matter what. And when it comes to prayer in the, today's age of grace, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is the passage for us. And watch my video on peace for more on this awesome passage having to do with the peace of God. Now here's a prayer that deals with peace. It's asking God for the serenity, for the peace, to accept the things we cannot change. Acceptance doesn't mean approving of a situation. Acceptance means we stop fighting against the reality of a situation we can't control, as ugly as it may be. P number two, perspective. When we're suffering, it's so easy to lose hope. We can feel crushed by hopelessness. How long, Lord, how long? Our friend Patty kind of nails the issue of perspective when, speaking of this present life, she looks around and says, if this is all there is? And Patty's point is, thank God this life is not all there is. Believers are not without hope. We have the ultimate hope of eternal life, the certain expectation of eternal life, where we will live not in a sick, fallen world, but in one where everything wrong will be made right, everything sick will be made well, and everything unjust will be just. Meantime, having an eternal perspective when we're suffering through tough times is the outlook that helps us endure. We need to take the long view, not the short. Romans 8, 
Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us in the life to come. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 7, 17, and 18. Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly in our inner person we are being renewed day by day, building up our foundation. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. When I catch myself taking the short view, slipping into despair, self-pity, feeling the victim, thinking, poor me, I give myself a booster shot, a perspective booster shot. It could be I bring to mind a high school girlfriend who was in a car wreck with a semi, killing her, three of her younger siblings, and their dad right before Christmas. Recalling this tragedy and thinking of her surviving family members snaps me out of self-pity real quick. And so does thinking about a dear lifelong friend of mine who a few years back had a slip and fall which left him paralyzed and living in a care facility. Yeah, I, I got nothing to whine about, but lots to be grateful for. In every situation, there's always something to be thankful for, especially God's grace. Having an attitude of gratitude can help change our perspective. Now for P number three, practice. Putting biblical precepts and principles into practice helps us endure tough times. I'll share with you my go-to verse for guiding my actions in adversity. Take it or leave it, but it helps me. Romans 12:21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. First, let me clear something up. The word evil in the verse does mean wicked, but it also means trouble, adversity, suffering. Troubles can leave us feeling overcome, overwhelmed, immobilized. Have you heard the expression, do the next right thing? I find it helpful when trouble overcomes me. I find it helpful to couple this expression with our Romans verse. So it goes like this. I try to overcome evil with good by doing the next right thing, the next good thing. And the Bible is full of clear instructions and principles about what is right, what is good. And these verses don't say, direct my great big leaps. They say, direct my steps my choosing of one good thing to do. It could be as simple as emptying the dishwasher or gathering a few clothes to donate or calling my 92 year old mom to say hi, hoping I'm not interrupting bingo. In our dark world, our good works, no matter how small, provide a tiny glimmer of light in the darkness. Just a reminder, we are to overcome evil with good not with vengeance, not retaliation. We overcome by keeping on doing the next good thing without giving up or giving in to despair, even when we seem to see no results. When we keep overcoming evil with good, it's like saying to our trouble, nanner nanner, you can't keep me down. We need encouragement to not give up, and the Bible provides it. We're encouraged to not grow weary doing good and to remember that we are not alone. God is right here with us. God is here strengthening us to endure. Now, I need to say this. I'm a believer, but I'm no superhero. I'm only human. And I recently had an upset having to do with one of my children. It flattened me. I didn't even want to get out of bed. So I didn't. I lay there in bed, escaping, watching episode after episode of The Crown season one on my iPad. Eventually I prayed and listened to some Psalms on my Audible app. And doing these seemed to jumpstart my inner person, kind of revved up my strength of character, which helped me try putting this upset into some kind of perspective 
and finally I could get out of bed. I spent the rest of the day practicing overcoming evil by doing good, starting by making an online donation to my favorite animal rescue. I was still upset, as any parent can understand, but I was no longer overcome by this trouble. I moved past being overwhelmed thanks to the good foundation of character God has been building inside me. And by applying my three Ps, prayer, perspective, and practice. At the start of this video, when we said God wants us to endure hardships and afflictions, and we might have thought, well, that's not very nice of God, but look here. If we endure, we will also reign with him. God has his eye to the future when endurance in this life will produce rewards in the next. Those who endure tough times without giving up on God today will be serving him in some level of authority in the life to come. This is God's reward for those who keep on following him, keep remaining faithful to him no matter how tough the times. God rewards those who stick with him no matter what. And let me tell you about a friend who was a victim of a crime so heinous, so horrendous, it made national news. Heck, it made the international news. Yet years later, at the sentencing hearing for the monster who committed this crime, this friend stood in the courtroom making his victim impact statement, and in his statement, he voiced his faith in God right there in court right there to be recorded in the transcripts, right there in front of the rolling cameras. He was sticking with God no matter what. And now that is endurance. And if you like this video, if you would be so kind as to click the thumbs up button, maybe share this video with others. And also I'd be interested in your thoughts if you'd like to leave a brief comment below. Thanks so much. Till next time.